and if others join us, then that would be great. <laughs> they did. Oh, the real Liberty Bell. Mm -hmm. but yeah, it's, that's false sorry. advertising. Well, we'll, we'll jam it up. Hello, welcome to us. Thank you all for coming to my class. And this is going to be a little less formal than last year. This is going to be a lot of Q&A and a lot of playing with stuff. Um, I had hopes of showing you some pictures of different customs from Tibia's Little Museum, not GenCon.org, before I realized that we revamped the website and that doesn't exist anymore. Um, but I got started making customs because I showed up here in 2010 and I had a wonderful time and I saw all this cool stuff and people were making things and they were selling things and I thought, I want this and I want this and I want this. And boy, that got expensive fast. So I thought, well, wouldn't it be cool if I could make this and this and this? Cause Maybe I have the same basic skills as somebody else with creative ability. And really, all customs are. There is no magic to it. It is just figuring out how to make something so. So um, a few of the customs that I've made, well, you can see out in the hallway. Um, we're just going to kind of walk through some basics that I went through last year, and then we're going to get into some fun things. But um, last year, I showed how to make some very simple projects, and one of the simplest was probably this dress. You've seen some of my mini dresses. Um, I'm going to give away the secret if you don't want to give me three dollars. It's okay. Here's how you do it yourself. <laughs> the secret to this dress is finding a funky sock. Um, funky looking sock. <laughs> because you know at the dollar store there are all these cool wild pattern socks and and I know that the trend now is to sell the packs of 10 socks that none of them match that's 10 dresses right there because the long and short of this dress is really this <laughs> do you like to be my audio visual guy yeah you want me to do something I don't know what to do yeah you know what if you could just scroll through panels as I talk that would be Which awesome one? Um, just scrolling down from where we are. Uh, basically, to make that dress is very simple. You need a sewing machine. Um, first thing you want to do is thread your sewing machine. And I don't even know the terminology. I'm not going to pretend to be a sewing expert. I will say whatever the little zigzag pattern is works better if you're using stretchy fabrics because if you use a straight stitch and you're stretching, odds are good you're going to stretch that stitch right apart. But the zigzag stitch will give you um, some wiggle room, so I use this little zigzag more than anything if I'm using stretchy fabric, and stretchy fabric like a jersey is really a wonderful tool, but especially with a sock, you've got a lot of give. Next screen, please. Okay, and basically what I do with my sock is I just cut the toe off, and cut the heel off, and I take the middle two, and I split it up the side. Please play for it. Cutting the sock lengthwise. <laughs> you lay the sock open flat so that you've got all the sock innards facing up. And you just hem the top part, hem the bottom part. I'm not good at well, audio. That's okay. okay. You know what? Without, without the right pictures, this is not quite as cool as. But if, I hope you get the idea that if you've got the, the two part of the sock, cut off the top, cut off the bottom, slice it up the side, you hem one side, hem the other, fold it over itself, and just kind of sew a little curve around where you think the body part ought to be. And you'll end up with a little tube. And that little tube, because the doll will form it around itself, looks very cool and form-fitting when you put it on. And all it looks like when it's off is a tiny little tube. But you can make more dresses out of just ingenuity like this. It doesn't take a whole lot of skill. Um, I mean, really, a lot of what I learned was learning on the fly. I am not a great seamstress. I have just acquired skill from a lot of repetition. Patterns tend to put people off, too, I think, sometimes. Mm -hmm. just trying to figure out, you know, which goes where and where to sew it. Yes, and you know what? You don't need to have a pattern, or you may want to create your own patterns, or for those who would like to see what I do. When I first got started with this, I thought the easiest way to begin was to deconstruct what Jen did. So I took some old Jen clothes and I 
ripped the seams out and I just analyzed how did these things go together? How would I put this together if I had to do it from scratch? And really the secret is just in figuring out which seams have to come first for all the pieces to go together. So it, it's a little bit of an analytical game, but any gem outfit that you can find, you can recreate. It is not that hard. So I would just say cut the pieces out. Now I'm gonna hand out a, a pattern of a couple of key things that I've, I've used a lot over the years. Um, last year, TJ designed a leotard, and I thought, how in the world am I going to do a leotard? Because <laughs> you like to throw chances at right. me. <laughs> so I made a leotard pattern, and I realized that if I stitched up one side, then, but if I cut two of this pattern out, and I stitched them together along one side, I'd have two side by side, and then I could hem the entire top I don't remember what order I did, but I would fold a seam for a leg hole, I'd fold a seam for a leg hole, and then I'd just kind of see how, how it had to form together. The last two stitches would be putting the side and putting the bottom together. And it was just kind of a matter of trial and error. And I figured that that, you know, that using stretchy fabric, the top held itself for the most part. We did have straps. I think that was more for design than for function. <laughs> you can add some straps. You can add that into the process as you're adding seams. But you made it um, too so that the straps didn't have to be like, because it's stretched, there was no clasp or anything. Right. Like, oh my God, stretch, like genius. Genius. <laughs> stretch is your friend. Mm -hmm. So I've got some patterns. This is going to be short. Sure. This is going to be a lot of freeform Q&A. So if you've got a Q, maybe I've got an A. <laughs> But I also thought the one thing that I think people find the most mysterious about doing customs, sewing is probably the easiest part. If you've got a creative mind, you can figure out how to do it. Just know that nothing is impossible. If it exists somewhere, somebody figured it out. There's no reason you can't figure it out too. And with the wealth of different fabric choices that are out there, I mean, the internet, you can find anything you want. There's even a girl in our community that does some custom printing of gem type patterns that never existed before. So anything you can dream, you just have to have to figure it out. And a lot of the existing uh, designs will kind of lead you in the right direction. Like once you learn how to do a jumpsuit, you can do any kind of jumpsuit. You can even learn how to do baggy pleated pants in a jumpsuit if you have to. <laughs> you can learn how to give it one shoulder. You learn the, the skills just by doing it. But the one skill that I think is probably most mysterious that doesn't have to be is how to make shoes and boots and all the plastic little things that people like and that also is not really as hard as people think. Um, the lesson that I learned from GemCon is that it's good to pass on knowledge and uh, for those of you who are familiar with the name Gem Girl, there's a girl in Australia named Rachel Prince who is like the main queen of state. customs and I'm, I've not met her but I'm betting that if she was sitting here with us she would be saying the same stuff that I'm saying exactly. about no, anybody can do this. But she is, you know, she's done it she's a lot. Perfect. She's, she's like the premier. She's, she's perfect. She's who I look to and say, wow, that's pretty cool. And she's like, yeah, I so. <laughs> <laughs> but to my knowledge in our community, she was probably the first to figure out how to do this. So she passed the knowledge along, and she showed Shivana, and Shivana she showed. She has the, the, she picked every, the, the dolly hair, I'm familiar with, with hair rooting, dollyhair.com, where you get the nylon hair to do it with. She, her, her little blurb about what colors go with which gem doll mm -hmm. is, was made by Rachel, just from trial and error, oh. getting colors and looking at them, and trial, you know, it was made. All, anything creative in this community is <laughs> trial and error. So Rachel was kind enough to share the knowledge, and I don't know who she showed first, but I know that she showed Shivana, and Shivana showed me, and so I'm going to show you, I think I and then pass the knowledge along. The most important thing I have learned is to cover your workspace, and that I have learned through trial and error, and if anybody would like to contribute to the purchase of a new dining room table, I'll just say, and can I Paul think of that? No. Uh, there's a lot that goes on that Paul doesn't know. Oh, no. <laughs> So I brought some of the fun things that typically cover my dining room table. And there's a lot of different supplies that you can use, and they're, you know, I'm just kind of a fan of the stuff that I have found. There's a company called Polytech, P-O-L-Y-T-E-K. I think it's polytech.com is probably their website. Um, I buy most of my mold creating materials from them. Um, 
there are other things that you can use, but I like that they have a two-part silicone mold system. And that would be very difficult for me to show you because it would be messy. But the long and short of it is, if you order from them, they're two-part, I don't even know what they call it. What I, literally, the conversation I have every time is I call them up, Stan answers the phone, I say, hi, Stan, it's Lori in New York. Could you please send me the blue goo I ordered last time? That makes sense the right stuff. There's a two-part kit. The process of creating a mold, which is where you have to start here, is first of all, to have something to mold. Now, here's a, oh, here's a boot that resembles what the dolls would wear. This one happens to be hard. Um, what I would do to make a mold of this is I would take a glue stick, and I would adhere some glue to the bottom, just enough to make it sticky in a cup that more than covers it. I would use a slightly taller cup, maybe a thinner one. But I would glue this to the bottom, and while that is held in place by the glue stick, I would take even amounts of my uh, silicone, my liquid silicone, and I would mix them up in a cup, and I'd take a popsicle stick, and I would just have a bigger cup to the side and I would stir it as smoothly as I can to try and avoid getting bubbles. And I would pour the blue goo on top of the boot. And it would look like that. So there's boot on <laughs> And after about 24 hours, I would come back to it and I would cut the cup off or I would peel off. You can, I think you probably use a paper cup, but I think that these little shot glasses that you can get at a party store work the best and they're cheap and disposable. Uh, and so the boot will be in here. I will extract my boot from my mold and this is what it will look like. How do you get it out? Hmm? How do you get it out? How do I get it out? Okay. Just like I showed you. The sole of the foot is sticking out. It's oh, yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah, well, I'm, it's a little tougher to put it back. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't have to put anything on the outside of it to make it like... No. Nope, it's just going to slide out because this is silicone. It's slick to begin with. It's very flexible too, so you can it. Yep. And then when it's time to actually make my mold, though, it, I think it's a good idea to use release agent, um, although I wasn't turned on to this for like a year after I started making mold, so it's not essential. But this is a release agent that Polytech also sells, and the idea is that if you spray the inside of the mold, I guess it makes it kind of cold. I'm, something about it helps it to release later. I start working with chemicals, though. I've learned also through trial and error that this is a must. <laughs> and you can tell how much I have used these and how much backsplash has come at my eyes. Nice. And that is a lesson Proof, you, I yeah. don't want you to learn the hard way. I came a little too close by taking chances, so I will not take chances any longer. But goggles are very important. Um, I got some rubber gloves. Actually, I like nitro gloves better. I just happen to have this handy. Um, I, I go to Rite Aid and they have them in the, in the back aisle. You can get a box of like 50 or 100 and those will last you for a while. So, rubber gloves and protecting your work surface and protecting your eyes. Basically, protecting yourself all the way along. Hmm? I am like a mad scientist. <laughs> um, and would anybody like to be a mad scientist with me? I was sure. like, no. Yeah. Okay. Come on up. I had a tally numbers last night. Okay. The lab aprons. Yeah. Right. We'll just be careful. Okay. I'll do the messy stuff, okay. but you can. You want to put on the glass? Mad scientist gem. Yes. Yes. Mad scientist. This may not work with your rings so nicely. Coming soon. Goggles. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm going to open up what we're actually going to use to make the boot itself. Because once we have the mold, then we need to cast the boot or whatever. I mean, it can be, it can mold absolutely anything. Especially if it has a flat surface at the bottom, those are the easiest things. I've done things that weren't totally flat. You've got to do trial and error, but it can be done almost anything. The goo you use, have you had anything that you haven't been able to get your tester back? One thing, yes. Um, for the most part, I've never had any problem with anything plastic. 
Um, I have molded some very rare things just to see if they could be done and I've never had a problem with paint coming off or anything like that. The only time that I did have a problem was uh, I thought I would experiment and see could I do an integrity shoe. Mm -hmm. And because they are fabric, yeah. those do not do so nicely. Um, but I've not had any problems with doing anything that was made out of plastic. Okay, you've got your gloves. Mm -hmm. Here's our release agent. Could you spray that inside and just kind of get the crevices? Awesome, that is all we need. Just let that set for a second. And I like Amazing Casting Rosin. They're, Polytech actually makes something that you can use. I like this better. It's a matter of preference. I think it's all basically the same stuff. Where but this is a two-part kit. This I get at Hobby Lobby. Okay. Um, you can probably order off of, they've got a website, moldputty.com. And Mold Putty has a few different things that you can order. And they've got some cool tools. But this works on the same premise as, um, as the two-part silicone that makes the mold. Basically everything, the key is equal parts. So there's side A and there's side B. Do you feel comfortable pouring? Sure. Parts? Okay. So we only need a tiny bit. And in fact, I'd say, you know, if you filled each of these to a quarter inch, that would be more than we need, but we can do that just to make sure we're good. And I won't. <laughs> Don't make her nervous because this is not hard or anything to get hung up on. If you make a mistake, you start over. No it's biggie. like baking. <laughs> okay, we're going to put that in the second cup. So we're going to just make sure that they're as level as we can get them. I love that Mad Scientist is doing this. <laughs> <laughs> there she never tried That's awesome. <laughs> yes. And that's exactly what I would do. And she got that about as level as I think you could for my balling. So that's exactly where we start. Now, how much you're going to need will, of course, depend on what it is that you're making. And a little bit of trial and error. You'll probably use way too much in the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, before I do anything else with this, these two products are going to be mixed together. But unless somebody designs a white boot, which is really cool. Yeah. You're probably going to want to add a little bit of color. Thank you very much. And this is some, some powdered, um, just some powdered pigment. I think this came from Michaels. There's a lot of different brands, but powdered pigment that, uh, will do best in the rosin. Um, Shivana once told me about, I think there are things that you shouldn't put in, but I, <laughs> like, I don't think I would advise much in the way of metal. I don't know why, just I'm going to say steer clear of that because this does get warm. There's probably some reasons for that. But the things that I have used successfully, <laughs> I've not tried that. I'm not advising you to try that. But I will say powdered pigments I've never had any trouble with. Um, glitter I've never had any trouble with. I've heard even some eye makeups and depending uh -oh. on what's in them, yes. you use those for pigments. I tried some of that too yeah. because um, there's some very cool 80s colors yeah. I, I pigment. Um, what we're using here today is going to be opaque. So it won't take the the color as vividly as if I used the exact same product in a clear rosin, you can get clear and then you can do a lot more vivid things and the glitter would take way better. This is going to end up coming out rather pastel compared to what comes out of it. But it's more like a it's, smoky like a cloudy? Yeah, cloudy. because this is opaque to begin with, it would take a lot to make it any really deep color. Okay. So it's it, using the opaque is going to be more pastel. But if you want a deeper color, all you have to do is get the clear and you know go from there. So That's going to take the color. Pigment. Pigment. Right. The, with this, without, without pigment, pigment, this is going to come out white. Like, correct. But with the pigment, it'll come out blue, but lighter than what we're looking at here. Now, what I'm going to ask you to do is just take a little bit on the edge of a popsicle stick, and we're going to put it into the connection. Uh, you know, we could do more than that, although, can people see how much she's taking? Can you see that? That's, that's probably decent. And if you don't like how the color comes out, you can always add two. Okay. You want to oh, thank you. Oh, We've got our videographer here. Uh, no, I'm just okay. keeping it nice. Okay. We're going to put that into the clear mix. Okay. Like, do you want me to stir it in? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Drop that right in, and she's stirring it up. And, and this isn't water, so it's not dissolving immediately, but it, okay. will, it will blend. 
So you want, you want to mix it until it's as thoroughly smooth as possible. And can you hold that to show how it's kind of coming out as you're mixing? Can, can everybody see that? <laughs> and I still see chunks, so we're just yeah. going to keep on mixing it up. It's like pudding mix. It's really you got to get the chunks out. <laughs> I love baking. I really feel like at home right now. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I think um, now we're cooking Rachel had put like yeah. those um, the candy sprinkles. She from, did. Oh mm -hmm. my god. That's like yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Little shoes. ball candy mm -hmm. sprinkles. Oh, wow. and they, they, and the clear shoes. They look amazing. Would any like suspension acrylic suspension? That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would anybody else like to try what we're doing? Because we've got another mold of something kind of jemmy down there. If anybody would like to experiment, this can be hands on. Yes, Somebody's got to make a jump start. Do you hold that up over here? Oh, and there's a little fast gem. Yeah. The yeah. We have a volunteer. We have a volunteer. Oh, no, okay. Woo -woo. <laughs> Let's hook this guy up. Yeah. This is really awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's got glasses, so I feel okay about this. Yes. <laughs> one thing I'm almost glad I have actual triple glasses, because nine times out of ten, I don't end up having to. Probably. You probably oh, should. I'll show you where the problem is going to lie. Honestly, the glasses. You're probably not going to have too much of a problem with the mixing. Right, there is a step that things get weird. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Um, okay. First of all, we're going to spray this. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, do you have another glove? That's where you say that. That's it. Here. Okay. Here. Which hand Which hand do you use? No. Which hand do you use? No. Right handed or left Thank hand? You. you know what? For these steps, you, I'm sorry. I didn't really. I didn't realize I was yeah, wrapping up. We'll probably be okay. Things. You can spray. Properly we'll protect the dominant hand. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Perfect. So he'll just get ready to prime this and then we'll share. Okay. But we're all good here. Here's the step where things get a little fun. Well, what we need to do now is stir these together and evenly blend them. So okay. please pour one into the other. It doesn't really matter which. Just use the stick to scrape it. Pour one into mm -hmm. the other. Is there a recommended one? Like, what would you? Common sense would tell me to use this into that because it okay. would be hard to get the pigment back out of okay. that. Okay, that's what I was. Yeah. I yeah. love that she uses common sense because well, I would have done the yeah. opposite, and it makes no difference. It comes yeah. out the same. <laughs> as long as they're I together. I need to see me trying to get all the blue as much as I could. Yeah. So just kind of start at yeah. it like we're making gravy now. Okay. Yeah. Making gravy. <laughs> there we go. Gravy. <laughs> Okay, now the window of time here uh -huh. is a little bit shorter. Okay. So we're going to stir that together. This product, the window is shorter for mixing and it hardens up pretty fast. So that okay, that is good. Now here's what we're going to do, and here's where you need the goggles, and I'm okay. going to be careful. Okay. We need to put it into every crevice of this okay. mold, and my experience has been working, trying to get it into the shoe first, mm -hmm. or into the heel part first. Okay. I'll hold, you okay. pour, pour it as much as you can into the heel area and the sides around the heel. Okay. If it spills out, it's okay. Yeah, it sounds like Don't worry about it. A... We've got wax paper. Okay, that's good. Now, you know, the hotel short one here. <laughs> we're going to, nope, here's okay. where if it's going to splash back, it's probably going to happen when we lift carefully uh, the toe okay. and then yeah. pour a tiny bit more into that toe area. And let's not let that toe kick back at us. And yay, no splash. Yay. And we're going to let that set for about 10 minutes. So uh, let's see what time it is. About 10 minutes ought to do it. We'll have a boot before this is done. <laughs> see, with Shavona, when she did it in 2010, uh, I think she was using different stuff, and it was a deal where she couldn't actually show you the finished product. Right. It took too long to set up. So this is amazing. That's, That's awesome. happening soon. Because yeah. we have extra, and our window is short, and we have one glove, I'm going to say, would you mind not mixing, but no, instead take your one glove and make well, this has been start. released yet. Yeah, so oh, okay. Agent Let's spray the release agent first. It's very 80s. It's just one glove. That's all we need? Okay. Yep, that's good to go. Okay. Yep. Take a popsicle stick, scrape out whatever we've got left. Ought to fill that nicely. Yay! And this mold, incidentally, was made by I. I took some clay, I cut oh. out a gem star I liked, I put All a little right. crystal in it, and I thought, let's mold it. <laughs>
Now, what about bubbles? Do you tap at the molds a little bit as you pour in some of the ones with crevices to get rid of bubbles? Or do you um, try not to stir too hard? I try to avoid the bubbles from the get-go right. by stirring slowly. Slowly and evenly instead of eggs. I, I do my best and they're not all perfect and there will be bubbles and I did throw boots out. Um, I say just go slowly and that tends to avoid the bubbles. If you see a bubble, take a little toothpick to it. Mm -hmm. And we're going to just set these aside. Thank you very much, Jem and Helper. You did set it out with, uh, with the clay mm -hmm. cutting out for the gem stone mm -hmm. that you put a, a stone on it to, uh, to yes. be part of the boat. Would it work to even put a gemstone in the spot? Oh. It would. I'm so glad I you asked that. I didn't know if it that. would can, can, uh, mold together or if it would be better to just glue it on after. Oh, 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 I get what you're asking. And before I answer that, look how it's already oh, turning white. Yeah. It's, it's, it's already, already setting up. Yeah, the oh, wow. chemical reaction's happening and that you wow. can't really... The surface is much wider, so we're seeing it a lot yeah. faster I, I deal there. with resin in my job, too, cool. and, and you oh. seriously, it gets so hot that sometimes you can actually feel really? the heat coming off of the chemical reaction. You, yes, because it's warm to touch. Burned anything? No, it is not that hot. And silicone is a good heat agent anyway. If I touch, probably what they use I'm it. Sorry. sorry. If I touched this now, it would be too sticky, but I would not burn myself. Just be very warm. Yes. I know you said it was warm, but like I was even surprised pouring it in, you can feel it in the cup. And it, yes, because it had sat there for yeah. a whole 30 seconds to a minute by the time you touch it. Yeah. So yeah, it's happening that fast with this opaque stuff. With the clear stuff, Actually, I don't think that the clear stuff gets warm, or if it does, it happens later in the process. Yeah. Because the, the clear stuff will take overnight to dry. You, you won't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, a lot of these materials you do have to work with kind of quickly. And um, I don't know what else I to say. But it, it, to your question about the jewel. In this case, I was just trying to make a gem star, and I wanted to put the jewel into the mold. Right. If I made just a flat gem star and I glued a jewel on later, that's a matter of choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would work just okay. fine. That was just an experiment that I yeah. had. Yeah, the shoe was starting to. Yeah, mm -hmm. Maria, is yes. there a seashell maybe in that there box? Is a seashell. There yeah. is. Awesome. I'm going to show you a different way that you can mold something, and this now. I told you the silicone has to dry overnight, at least six to eight hours, I think. But we're going to do something that, how much time have we got? we got half an hour. We can do this. OK. Who would like to help me out? Any experiment? Any with what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they want to see what they're working with first. OK. This is another product by Amazing Casting. This is another product that I like, and this is the Amazing Mold Putty. Now, I think, personally, the silicone is preferential in most instances, but this is another way to go about certain items that, um, I, I think odd-shaped items, this is a little bit easier to work with. And honestly, I, I don't even need the gloves to work with this. I almost think that the gloves, if I didn't have long nails right now, I'd take the gloves off. Um, but this is a two-part kit that is basically like, like clay. It is putty. And the premise of always keeping even parts stays the same. So I will just take out a scoop of this. Anybody who wants to feel this, I, I truly, if I, if I didn't worry about getting in my nails, I wouldn't hesitate to put bare hands on that. It looks like poster putty. It's, it's like, like silly putty. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, kind of does. And this is a little tougher to eyeball what are even parts. So. Um, I just again common sense. Maybe roll it into a ball and make even balls before you. Would you like them to together. do that, Maria? I could do that. Do that for us, please. <laughs> It'd be my Vanna. I have been the the Vanna heavy looking on, but we'll do that. And that way, it's probably way easier to eyeball your your mounts. I would bet that you're right. And you know what? Common okay. sense is an awesome thing. And <laughs> <laughs> and the fact that I have acquired these skills without using a lot of it. <laughs> that skill, right? It's cool. That's We'll see and now I, I'm learning something out of our workshop too. That does yeah. make good sense. Because well, again, I mean, believe it or not, my 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 career. I, I work in the automotive field. I work in an auto parts store. I have for 17 years. And you would be surprised how many you know things you pick up there, like pure acetone, uh, things that you use in the doll modding process that you just wouldn't think. Fine grit sandpaper. If you have a doll with an imperfection on her mm -hmm. face, I have an Aja with boo boo nose. Mm -hmm. 
gone. Just a couple of thousands of layers of, of vinyl taken off. Her nose hasn't changed shape, but you know it's great. And just the things you pick up on while you're doing it. And we deal with a lot of this kind of kind of putty, um, you know, for patching holes in metal and things like that. I love watching somebody else doing this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe a little bit less. Okay. Any extra? We'll go back in our yes. tube. No waste. Cool. <laughs> What do you think? That looks right. equal. That looks about right. That looks as close as I might get it. Okay. <laughs> what kind of variance will you have if it obviously eyeballing it? But. Okay, if I do this wrong, it's not going to set and it'll stay sticky and soft and I'll know right away and there will be nothing I can do to fix it, but I'll know. <laughs> <laughs> and if it works right, I'll also know that pretty quickly. So, any volunteers to mush these together? Allie's over. I love mushing things. Allie okay. can mush it. Now, before you mush, oh. I'm just. Oh no, no, you can take the touch. No, it's okay. No, it's fine. <laughs> before you actually mush, I'm just going to tell you the window of time to do this is off? very short. Well, we so, don't want to get him in cracks because there's chains. Oh, like 25 rings on. Okay, so I'll just be careful. Okay, I so do this, I can rings do this on, quickly. That's not using common sense. We are going to do it quickly in a moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want to tell you yes, what we're going yes, to do because no, we do have yes. to move kind of quickly. Yes. Okay, so we've got the item that we're going to mold. And as soon as she mushes these together, you need to make sure they are thoroughly mixed. Okay. And I find kneading them between your hands is a good way to get them thoroughly mixed mm -hmm. because the window is really just a couple of minutes. As soon as you feel that they are thoroughly mixed, they are a soft putty, mm -hmm. you're going to just form it around the shell mm -hmm. and just all the way around. Just mold it. Yeah, use your hands to make sure that every crevice is covered. Do we need a release agent using the putty? We do not need a release okay. agent because, no. it, yeah. Before, you might as well go for it now. Going go for it right. now. Okay, she's going. Going. Go, going. Go, 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 going, go, going, go, go. <laughs> High pressure. High pressure. Oh, it's good. No, it's okay. And the color probably helps. I yeah, does the color, yeah. is the color going to indicate when yes. it gets yellow? Nice. When, yellow. It's, down, when it is smoothly. Um, the same Integrated. color all the way through, okay. when it's the then same it is correct. Is, is that sticky yellow stuff for you? Oh, and we're not going to go all the way around. We're just going to like... When my hand block. begins to perform a mold. Uh. <laughs> You're probably going to want to wash your hands before lunch, but this is, yeah. is, <laughs> is non-toxic stuff. It's very much like Play-Doh, everyone. I, I'm pretty 80s. sure one of these has a picture of a kid. Good. Laugh at his hand afterwards. Oh, it says keep out of reach of children, uh -oh. but so maybe I'm mistaken well, on just, that. They might eat it. I mean, that's no non-toxin complies with FDA 21. <laughs> but don't eat it, Allie. I won't do it. <laughs> there is one of these. It may even be the most. She's pretty. There is one that is full food safe. I it's believe. Almost there. But yeah. We won't do that. Today. Almost there. Yeah, she's doing a great job. It's it's just turning like a it's turning white yellow. yellow. You're so good. Okay. Can you feel it? Getting I'm tougher? so good at play doh. Does it actually have start to feel like it's? If it's getting tough, then we're almost too late. So I say let's just take what you've got now okay. and plop it on top of the shell and okay. make sure all the crevices. Do are I have to try to keep a flat surface of the shell like we did with the shoe? Eh, I Probably think it makes it get easier. It yeah, for these purposes, yes. Although I have done odd shapes like and gone. Yeah, I, I say let's yeah, leave that on the, yeah, let's leave a flat surface, okay. let, we'll let it do its thing there. And I think you I did like pretty that. well. And then the chemical mixture, just, I don't know why, I like a hands-on kind of approach. You stuff. know, this is where I started. I don't think you get as many good presses right. out of this. That's, I wanted to ask that. Uh, silicone, how many uses cool. do you get out of one yes. silicone mold versus a putty mold? I don't know. <laughs> but wow. Allie did right. This is what it looks like on the bottom, and we're just going to leave it there and let it harden up. Right now, it just feels kind of... You've got a blue thing on it. How'd you get blue? So, I think there was something on Oh, the silicone. Do I have a paper towel? No, I can get one. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah, paper towels are a good resource to have nearby. <laughs> Anybody who wants to feel this is more than welcome. Right now it's just in the still putty kind of stage, but it's going to turn into a, a very rubbery kind of <clears throat> feeling thing. How long does that take? Is this that takes, you'll feel it setting within minutes. Mm -hmm. They, I think they say you should probably, demold time is 15 to 20 minutes, work time is two to three minutes. So wow. two to three minutes is how much time you have to get those mixed up properly. 
They say 15 to 20 minutes. I don't think we're going to need that. We'll give it maybe 10 to be on the safe side while we answer some questions. And when Maria comes back, I think we're going to take a quick little field trip next door while we wait on this. Um, one of the advantages to this versus this, besides the fact you can get a lot more out of this mold, I don't know numbers, um, these molds, when they start to get uh, a little bit too old to keep reusing, they just turn like a the color changes. It starts to look old. Pieces might start to break off, but you can get a lot out of one of these. These also, the color changes and they start to break off. It just sort of happens faster. You will, you'll be able to, to tell when a mold is too old. Um, so while that's sitting and before we take our tour, these look like they are ready to go. Um, oh, wow. Yep. So fast. Again, she, she had examples yeah, of everything good. in stages so you could see it when it was finished, but this wow. is amazing that you just see the finished product. This now. is not even really warm anymore, but a tiny wow. bit warm. So, anyone want to demold? No. You don't yeah. need gloves. This mm -hmm. is safe. So, yeah, prove it. <laughs> okay. Again, we'll dispose of your gloves. You can bring those up okay. here. Okay. We'll get rid of all the mess. And all we're going to do here is peel it out of the mold, and there's a toe in there. Yeah. Just peel it apart. Actually, you know what? I think I think Danny's going to want to see how you do this. So. Okay. Here I come. <laughs> can Can everybody? Get a kind of a view of what's going on here. This is exciting. Now there is a piece of the mold representing the toe is inside of that boot. So what we have to do is basically pull it off the mold the same way we would pull it off of a doll foot. Okay, so the back and just kind of. Yep, I'd start from the back. Starting okay. from the heel seems to be a little easier. If you need some help, I can hold it open. And it's probably a tiny bit soft right now, it so is. as you're pulling that out, it's okay. Okay, I'm like, I feel like I'm squishing it. No, if you squish it, it will, Ooh, it will come yeah. back. That's now, awesome. we may Ooh. want to feel this right now. Yeah. Nice. If you want to feel how it is right out of the mold, it is soft and it is squishy. It will not stay like that. It will harden up like yeah. that first oh boot that I showed Squishier you. Right now, it's just a tiny bit warm. And I don't know, wow. it'll probably take you know, mm -hmm. maybe half an hour or so before it's really hard. I cannot. That is just amazing. Yeah. Do you trim like the little parts yes. on the bottom? Yes, uh, on the bottom. So is there anything that's like destroyable at this point? Yes, the boot itself. Here's what we discovered. As lovely as that looks, the, practic excuse me, the practicality of that boot on a doll is not great because it is hard. Yeah, is um, so if you are very careful putting that boot on a doll, it'll probably be okay. But if you're changing things in and out, you're probably yeah. going to rip into the, the yeah, top. It's the, probably going to break. So that's why about. this year when, when a fashion was designed with boots, we were mm -hmm. challenged with figuring out how do we do a boot that's not going to break on people. And basically the procedure was the same, except I had to use a different material. So I called Stan. And I said, this is what I'm doing, Stan, help me. And he steered me toward, first thing he said was, how, how heavy a rubber, how thick do you want it? Do you want it like a car tire? And I said, no. Um, <laughs> because, I mean, I think Polytech probably deals in like high volume and industrial things. I think the fact that I, when I explained to him I needed a, a little boot, I, he, he undersold me. He said, you don't want the big package. Buy the little one. If I'm wrong, we'll help you. <laughs> okay. Um, and, and I got a two-part silicone, or excuse me, a two-part rubber making. Um, and he had different grades of rubber, and I went with, I think, probably the lightest one. So the boots are kind of lighter than Hasbro's. But basically the procedure was the same. I just had to find some other way. I had to, uh, again, figure it out, yeah. figure out how do we make rubber, and do a little research, and I found a place, and they showed me. And so you know, just asking <coughs> questions was great. So at this point, yeah, there's there's not a whole lot I can do to break that other than put it on the doll briskly. <laughs> um, what I would do with this is um, take some scissors and or a nail clipper. When it's warm, it's the easiest. You could just... Yeah. Trim off those little what's it's little hard, bits. Probably do like wiring, wiring dikes or yeah. something like that. I might, you know, smooth out that part. Um, if I had nail clippers with me, which I don't, I would get into the crevices a little bit what nicer. About, what about like a file? Um, when it is hard, right now it's too soft for a file. But when it's hard, I could take a file and smooth out those edges. 
um, when you get your souvenir fashions. If you have rough edges, my apologies, but I cannot file rubber. So, <laughs> so we did our best. Again, if you get like a fine grit, I mean, most automotive locations, uh, both places will have um, sandpaper in thousand to two thousand grit, um, and it's it's worked perfectly for for everything. Because vinyl is you know still squishy. Rubber, for rubber? It may work for rubber. Okay. Um, you just need to be gentle. While you All right, go to your auto care place. Mm -hmm. Again, yeah. have at it with your boots if you're not happy. You'd be surprised what you'll find. I mean, the the mirror the mirrored sticker material that always falls off of Stormer's shirt yeah. and Roxy's belt. Yeah. I have some in my kit. If anybody's interested, still, I bought a roll of chrome pinstriping, and it's the exact same stuff. It's just a mirror sticker. What you're doing. And I see that somebody has. I did it. Okay. <laughs> but we get to it. And here's our gem star. Awesome. So if I had done this in clear and made it glittery, I'd be selling it out on my table. <laughs> so pitch for my table. I'll be there at lunchtime if anybody's interested in purchasing any custom fashions. I also have integrity dolls for sale. And now you just toss leftovers. I toss for leftovers. I do not sweat that. And this mold is almost ready, but. We have 20 minutes left in this panel, well, really 15. So why don't we take a quick tour, and Maria, if you'd like to show them what you want uh, to show just them. Yep, yeah, different, different aspects. Obviously, before you make beautiful clothing and accessories, you'll want to take care of your doll. Um, and that's kind of where my specialty lies, is with cleaning up old dolls, as well as putting in the hair, putting the hair, painting faces, and so on. And my little display in the display room will be easier for me to say uh, what, what the best thing to do with those are. We'll come right back. 